go to the next slide. Right off, type 5. So, 
something there. Along y is 0, u y is u sin beta n t minus half g cos alpha into t square. So from here there will be time of light 2u sin beta divided by g cos alpha. How many of you got this as time of light? Yes, there is a time of light. Now how to find range? I use S equal to U T plus half T square along X axis, not Y. X axis. Y axis you already used. Exactly, you substitute T in that. What else you have to do? So S is what? R. I can't repeat myself again and again that it will be quite. Along x axis, u cos beta into t, which is what? 2u sin beta by g cos alpha. So this is ut minus half g into t square. No, sorry, not g. g cos alpha into t square, which is 2u sin beta hey, anybody simplify this what is the final expression you get so g cos alpha cos alpha no no in numerator you may get cos alpha minus beta probably just check sin beta divided by g cos alpha this has common if I take what will I get here cos beta I get that's it cos beta from this and here what will I get minus half g sin alpha not half this will be 2 right 2 square will come out so numerator will have 2 so no factor will come in just here what will be there minus g sin alpha sin beta divided by cos, cos. cos alpha. This is what I get? Yes or no? All of you understood this? Yes, now, now take cos alpha common. Here will be cos alpha cos beta minus sin alpha sin beta. Numerator will become what? Cos, cos alpha minus beta. Cos alpha plus beta, sorry, yeah, minus as well. So I will get 2 u square sin beta cos of alpha plus beta divided by g cos square alpha. This is my range. Now the equation should satisfy our previous scenario. Had it been the simple projectile, beta would have been what? Zero. Beta would have, no, alpha would have been zero. Put alpha equal to zero, are you getting the previous yeah. formula? Yeah. Alpha is equal to zero, you get 2 u square sin beta cos beta divided by g. So that, that is what u square sin 2 beta by 2 g. So you are getting that equation? Okay. Don't copy it down looking from the board. You should have done this yourself. Exact this thing will not be asked in the exam ever. You should have this habit of you know trying to do things yourself. Like, you no, know, physics is still this point. Everything else is mathematics. Physics ends here. Then all of this we have done is mathematics. Nothing else. We have rearranged the equation. We try to simplify it. 
then there is no physics in whatever you have done from here to there. Okay? So this is your fifth type of projectile. Now there can be a case in which multiple projectiles are there. Multiple. Okay? Till now we have only considered the cases where only one projectile is there thrown at a different different scenarios. Okay? So let's take type 6 or 7. Type 6. Multiple projectiles. Huh. Maximum heights on the ground, how do you find? Anyone? I want to find, let us say, in this scenario, let me raise this. In this scenario, I just give a hint, okay? Suppose I have to find maximum height. This height I want to find. How will you find it? Then what you do is this. You take you take your x axis like this and y axis like that. And then you put velocity of y axis to be zero. So initial velocity is what? Along y axis, initial velocity is u cos, sorry, u sine. What it is? Alpha plus beta. Yes or no? I have taken y axis vertically up and x axis horizontally to find the height from the level. I have changed the x and y coordinate. Why? Because I know the condition for maximum height as velocity along vertical direction to be zero. That's why I have taken my x and y axis like this now. Alright? So u y is this, velocity along y axis is zero. And then I use v square equal to u square plus 2 a s along y axis. I will get the answer. Axis along y axis will be what? Minus g. Right? So here if I write v uh, is 0 at the topmost point, u square sin square alpha plus beta minus 2 g into h max. So h max is u square sin square alpha plus beta by 2 g. Simple. Right? Have you understood the way we have done it and why we have done like that? To solve for the range and time of flight, we have taken our x and y axis to be inclined. But to solve for the maximum height from the ground, we have taken x and y axis as horizontal and vertical. Because it simplifies my effort. You could have done it other way also. You could have been like, okay fine, no, no, I will not take like that. I will keep my inclined axis. Then also you can solve it. But that will be a longer route. Fine. Okay, so now we will consider the type 6, which is multiple projectile. Now multiple, listen here, multiple projectiles can be any number of projectiles together and could be of, you know, different different types of scenarios, could be two projectiles can be thrown from two different inclined planes, you know, like this, one projectile thrown like this, other projectile thrown like that, so there is no limit up to which the varieties can be there. Alright? I will just take one simple scenario of micro projectile and show you how to analyze that scenario. But in the exam, something else will come in. Okay? But the method of analyzing that will be similar. Not same. Similar. This is not class 10. Okay, listen here. Draw this scenario. We have done this in uh, uh, bridge also. This is height h1, this is height h2. This is given r. The initial of is u1, this is theta1. Dot top, this is u2, this is theta2. 
sort of we have to find the condition for which they will collide mid air condition for which they will collide mid air the hint is both of them should be at the same place same time okay so their x and y coordinate should be same don't get demotivated motivated if you are not getting let's say 30 or 40 percent of whatever is have or whatever you are solving at home problems okay because if you score 60 percent in j mains it's a decent marks you you have seen your kemon test the marks you are getting all right so it is not like your school exams where you are not satisfied until you get 95 percent marks Okay, so don't put a lot of pressure in you. Like, you know, I'm not getting 90 percent, so I'm not doing well. That's not the case. If you're getting 70, 60 percent, it's a decent, decent marks. 70 percent marks means that you will be how many marks? 230 to 40. That will be, I think, uh, could be around top thousand, top two thousand ranks, and you could be. Landing in in the IIT also. If you get 2000 rank in IIT, you get one chance. Well. Okay, but if you get 90%, if you pressurize yourself that I should get 90%, you are aiming to be all India rank one. So of course that will put the pressure. That's not easy. Okay, so be happy that you are getting 60, 70%. What are you doing at home? If you are getting, you should not have an only 10% you are getting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you will solve it. Both of them have acceleration down. 
So f is not approaches? 0. 0. A minus A, 0. Both have the same acceleration. Yes or no? So relatively they are moving with constant velocity along y axis. So this into t should be equal to what? Distance of approach, that is h1 minus h2. Any doubt? When you divide these two equations, t will go away. That is the relation. You will not understand these things if you don't do any assignment or homework. If you just come here to sit, you will not get anything. I am assuming that you have solved at least 50 60 questions at home, a relative velocity. Then only you can hope to, you know, be in the flow of every class. Otherwise, soon you will lose the flow. Any doubts? Anything now? All clear? So this completes the theory of motion in 2D.